You ready? Let's go. Let's go. Let's run it. Like the evolution of the solutions that you provide. So the first month we tried all low-code tools. I'm glad we are on the same page. We started with simple chatbots. To build a successful tech business, you need to have two things in place. Hey guys, um, so I've already had an interview with Serdar, your co-founder. I think you are a great team because in my opinion, to build a successful tech business, you need to have two things in place, a skill set, for selling and a skill set for building. Sardar is responsible for sales. He's really great at it. You're responsible for building. I know you're smashing it. So today let's focus on the technical side of your operations, how you actually build projects, and um, then we'll try to figure out which kind of skill set is required to actually be capable of completing the projects that you sell as an agency. My audience already knows about Omnifusion AI and what you do. We know that you started one and a half years ago. So could you just tell us a bit about the projects you built one and a half years ago, uh, how it's changed, like the evolution of the solutions that you provide uh, to your clients, and then we'll take it from there. Sounds good. All right. Thank you for having me, brother. Pleasure to share some content on your channel as well. So I think what's interesting about uh, the place where I came from is that I have no technical background. I'm not a developer, uh, never coded anything in my life. So uh, for me, it was really interesting to get into the AI space. Um, when we started one and a half years ago, um, and we decided that I was going to build out these solutions, mm -hmm. it was really about figuring out how it works was like the first month. So the first month we tried all low code tools that there are. I think that's a great place to start. I think starting with low code tools is a no brainer. So that's things like voice flow. Back then it was bot press, but voice flow really dominated everything. Okay. Um, but one and a half years ago, everything was on voice flow. So you start to learn, okay, how do I prompt things? How do conditions work? All of this thing, all of these things. I've always been kind of good at like visualizing a whole project mm -hmm. and then understanding, okay, these are the elements that need to work together. But getting the hang of AI was really the thing that I spent the most amount of time on, especially prompting. So when we talk about how we started building projects a year and a half ago, we started with simple chatbots. Probably the first things we built was a chatbot for a website that can answer questions with a knowledge base or a chatbot that we can put into Instagram, which was also like one of the first things we did was connect AI to Instagram DMs, Facebook Messenger. So simple chatbots inside of Instagram DMs that can answer messages mm -hmm. and send out a link to book a call, for example. How did you do that? How did you connect your uh, chatbots to Instagram? Yeah, so we, back then, there was no tutorial on, on YouTube for it. So we figured out how to connect voice flow through the API to ManyChat. We published all of the tutorials, so maybe if it's interesting yeah. for people, you can link it. Um, we give them all away for free. So we just built the API connection and did that. So I think APIs are like one of the key things that you're going to learn very quickly as you start doing these simple builds. Mm -hmm. So the simple builds really consist of understanding the logic of how you need to map out a project, okay. understanding how you need to prompt it, understanding the knowledge base. And then as soon as you want to integrate it somewhere or stack an other tool into your build, you need to understand APIs. And I think if you have those four cornerstones, mm -hmm. you're in a really good place. And back then it was GPT 3.5. I mm -hmm. think GPT 4 just maybe came out around that time. Um, but now with GPT 4.0, 01, all of these models, it's so much easier to have it work on an API request for you or have okay. it do a little bit of JavaScript for you. So if you can understand how to use it, you don't necessarily have to be able to actually implement it if you understand the framework of okay. how to use it. Do you think it's still uh, viable if you if you understand uh, no-code tools and uh, how APIs work to actually build solutions that you can sell? I definitely think so. Okay. I think especially when you're starting out, that's going to be a viable solution. Okay. So when you're starting out, understanding low-code tools, a little bit of API, maybe basic JavaScript, um, or at least be able to work with ChatGPT to use JavaScript. Essentially, if you look at a piece of code like JavaScript, mm -hmm. if you understand if-else statements, if you understand variables, you can already piece it together a little bit with the help of ChatGPT. And then the API requests are going to be key for building out solutions that are actually impactful in the business because mm -hmm. you want to be able to connect to their CRM. You want to be able to put it into a different platform, mm -hmm. etc. And then as you start scaling, as you have clients, it definitely makes sense to bring on developers as well mm -hmm. to help you do those things. So that's sort of where my expertise stops. But the fact that I understand low code, no code, a little bit of JavaScript, APIs, the fact that I understand the baseline mm -hmm. allows me to manage the dev team successfully to then actually build 
better projects with full stack developers. That makes total sense. It even was the case for me. So I, I really quickly understood how and no-code tools work. But then there was a problem. I couldn't actually use APIs. I have no technical background. And that was a real problem because usually to provide real value, you need to connect your solutions that you can build with no no code or low code tools with some third party tools. Yeah. And for that, you need to understand the basics. That's why we created that program, the educational program, where we provide yeah. a curated technical crash course that will teach you the basics, the basics of JavaScript, and APIs, JSON construct, all of that. Yeah. to be able to utilize the no-code and local tools to, to their maximum potential. Very important. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. And also what you mentioned, that even if you don't code, being able to manage your developers and just internally, being able to hire people properly, you need those technical bases. Exactly. And that works the same for, uh, even for a salesperson. To be able to sell it to, to clients, you also need to be able to break it down properly and uh, explain how yeah. it would work. Yeah. So the basics are needed in any case. I'm glad we are on the same page. Okay, what's going on now? Which kind of projects are you building? Tell us a bit more about your team and we'll try to understand how complex they are and what you need to like scale and take on more complex solutions. Yeah, 100%. So when we started one and a half years ago, it was just me building the solutions. Now I have about five people working directly under me. We have a total of like seven developers in the team. Most of them are full stack developers because it is very useful. As you start building big, bigger projects in AI, you realize that a lot of things you don't actually need AI for. Mm -hmm. It's just code. So having those full stack developers come in is great. Um, so really the solutions that we build now are fully integrated sales systems. So we need to work in an existing company. We work with a lot of large companies as well, mm -hmm. who've built their sales systems, their infrastructure, the tools they use, their CRM, et cetera, mm -hmm. for five years, 10 years. So you need to come into that business and you need to understand on a very advanced level how to connect these different things, which is APIs, how to build a AI system that actually works, how to test the system before you implement it, because the bigger your clients get and the bigger the system becomes, the higher the stakes. You can't just put in a system and then give out a wrong answer yeah. um, or fuck up a sales call, basically. Yeah. You need to make sure that every single angle is, is thought of. And that's really something that comes with experience of building a lot of projects, failing a lot of times. I failed yes. many times. I've given projects to clients for testing and they've come back and be like, this is ass. <laughs> that, that just happens, you know? Yeah, then uh, you say we just need another iteration. That's exactly, it then it's another iteration. And so that's you, true. you have to go with the flow, take mm -hmm. the failures and, and learn from them. So yeah, as the team transitions, it's a very awesome process, I think for me, uh, because what I do best is visualize the whole system mm -hmm. and how the individual components work together. And that's where it comes back to like you have in your course, having those basic elements, the basic understanding of how these individual things work allows you to visualize the whole picture. And then when you have a dev team run with the idea, you understand what they're going to do. Maybe you don't understand how exactly they're going to do it, but you know what needs to happen. So that's really essential when you start scaling with a team. So yeah, as the more complex the solutions become, the more fun I feel it is and the higher the stakes are, but that's why we're in business. And I think everybody watching probably wants to get to that stage where you just keep leveling up yeah. the overall complexity of your builds. And it's super fun. That's that's all I can tell you. <laughs> okay, uh, that makes total sense. Yeah, I think that's it for, for this quick video. We've spent some time together. I know you're going to, to grow like crazy in the next year. Wish you good luck. Guys, I'm gonna uh, leave the links for all the tutorials we discussed for Emil's channel. Check it out, a ton of value there. And good luck to you too. Thanks, yeah. bro. Thank you for having me, brother.